They have never been to Russia. They have only heard and read about it. So this journey is historic. We were waiting for a delegation from Papua New Guinea at Pulkova Airport and were worried where they were. I was informed that at the passport control, they didn't believe that it really was a delegation. The officers asked the delegation, who is meeting you? They said, Miklucha Maklai. At first they were shocked, of course. But then the problem was sorted out. <laughs> the Papuans arrived on Russian land, in Maklai's village. To be more precise, New Guineans. And not in Maklai's village, but in Russia. Miklucha Maklai Foundation presents a documentary film journey of Papua New Guineans in Russia. They spent more than two days traveling, but the tiredness and excitement aren't important. What's key is their interest in Russia. And in Nikolai Miklucha Maklai Jr., who invited them. He's the descendant and namesake of the great Russian ethnographer. I'm the great-grand-nephew of the great Nikolai Miklucha Maklai, traveler, humanist, public figure. In 1996, UNESCO titled him a citizen of the world for his humanistic ideas. In 1871, during his research activities, he landed on New Guinea Island and met the local people, the Papuans. They didn't even know what iron was at the time, though they were progressive in many ways. He lived with them and kept a diary. European scientists back then claimed that the Papuans were an intermediate evolutionary link between apes and men. But Miklucha Maklai declared that this was wrong. He fought for the rights of the local people, the Papuans. And not only for the Papuans, but also for the Melanesians and Polynesians of New Guinea Island. Therefore, New Guineans can really say that he was the first person who wanted them to become independent. And they did. Papua New Guinea is now an independent state. They still remember the name of the ethnographer in Papua New Guinea. And the coast where he lived they named the Maklai Coast. And in the 21st century, they greeted Nikolai Miklucha Maklai Jr. there with full honors. In 2017, we landed on the Maklai Coast for the first time since the Soviet expedition 40 years ago. I didn't expect such a greeting. 3,000 people, they raised the Russian flag and sang their anthem. And Michael Samare, the first Prime Minister of the state, was there, with other dignitaries, to pay us their respects and show how important this was. It's the jungle they came into. When I heard that they still remembered Miklucha Maklai and Russia, I couldn't quit. I wanted to fulfill their wish. They used to ask Maklai, what does Russia look like? What does Maklai's village look like? That's why I organized this journey to Russia. And he's been to Papua New Guinea, so he basically know, knows uh, who we are, and uh, that's why he, he can relate to us, I think, more easily. I was, it was like, oh, okay, so, wow, it's, it's, it's good that um, he looks like, he, he looks like he's uh, and, uh, Nicolai McLean's senior, so I was, uh, I was really impressed that oh, he took he took the the initiative to you know sustain or took the initiative to promote the important work and also to help uh, make us the people of Papua New Guinea understand the importance and significant work that was done by Nicola, Nicola McClay. Their acquaintance with Russia began with St. Petersburg. Miklucha Maklai Sr. lived here. 
The guests from Papua New Guinea visited St. Isaac's Cathedral, one of the legendary symbols of the northern capital. Magnificent and monumental. I didn't realize that like, you can preserve a lot and learn a lot from even just the walls and the um, paintings or the doors or the ornaments that are inside. To us, a uh, cathedral or church, it's just a building where you can go in and pray. They were impressed by the walk along the colonnade. Here it seemed that it was possible to fly over the city, especially as it was windy. I went outside and the wind blew back and I almost flew back, so I made a joke that, oh, this, I'm going to fly off. They were given warm clothes, but they were cold at first all the same. In their homeland, after all, the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. What are they like, the New Guineans? They are usually imagined with a spear and a loincloth. As Miklucha Maklai described them. But much has changed since then. I wanted to invite delegates who will not just treasure memories of Russia in their hearts, but will also help establish bilateral relations between our countries in cultural and scientific spheres. So I invited sociology and political science academics from the universities of Madang and Port Moresby. Hey! Not everyone is allowed to fire a salvo from the cannon of Peter and Paul Fortress. So Michael was very happy. Man, I fired the cannon that you only see in war. I feel so awesome and powerful. <laughs> My prim prime minister might be jealous that I was the one who fired it. <laughs> Zaichi Island is the site where St. Petersburg was founded. The Peter and Paul Fortress is located here. In 1861, Nikolai, aged 15, and his elder brother were imprisoned here for a few days after participating in a student demonstration. many places in the northern capital related to the great scientist and traveller Miklucha Maklai. He studied at the second St. Petersburg Gymnasium. The academic staff and the students gave the guests a warm welcome. They take a lot of photos, there are so many interesting things for them all around. They tried to find their home on the ancient maps at the Russian Geographical Society. Nikolai Mikhlucha Maklai's personal collection of diaries and more than 700 sketches, also very important for science, are stored here in the archive. I was actually flattered or honored to actually be able to touch um, original documents um, from Nicolai Maklou Maklai's uh, uh, records uh, of when he visited Papua New Guinea. St. Petersburg, Galerna Street, a hotel. The apartment where Miklucha Maklai lived at the end of his life with his wife, Margaret, and children was here. The preserved interior and the atmosphere of the house helped guests plunge into pristine history. For me to go today, it was very in interesting to see how he lived compared to how he went to Papua New Guinea and lived with the people. He was able to, I think, adapt to be able to go and live amongst 
Papua New Guineans and live, live his, his comfort um, in Russia. I think was the actual um, room that he was in, such a confined space and for someone with such um, intellect, I would say, for such um, curiosity to want to explore and want to do the great works that he did and all of that came in such a small compact room. Miklucha Maklai lived a striking but short life. He died in St. Petersburg at the age of 42 and was buried at the Literatorsky Maski, a part of Volkova Cemetery, near to the graves of his father and sister. I stood uh, at his grave, I actually bent down, I touched the uh, monument and uh, I just remembered, I thought back to all the stories I read about him and that now I had the opportunity to see where the, uh, where the guy was laid to rest. You know, I think he, over the 40 years, he had done a lot. It's a bit sad in a way, but we've missed a lot of potential from, from him. So that is something the world missed. However, with this, the time he spent and the input that he and especially in his influence in the right coast area of Papua New Guinea is uh, significant and very important. And it's the reason why uh, the foundation started and I came to Russia. Many of the delegates studied economics and were interested in visiting the St. Petersburg State University of Economics, where they had productive discussions they discuss plans for student exchanges and distance learning. They also discuss cooperation at the Emperor Alexander I St. Petersburg State Transport University. Nikolai Miklucha, a railway engineer and father of the scientists, studied there. The Soviet Union, for many years, was regarded as the biggest reading country in the world. The guests wanted to see a local bookshop. There was a lot to read in Soviet times. This book, The Man from the Moon, had a print run of 100,000 copies. My grandmother gave it to me in 1979. The books were printed in millions of copies and every pupil knew about Maclay. The guests were amazed at seeing the book Journey to the Maclay Coast, written by Nikolai Miklucha Maclay Jr. following the expedition of 2017. The pictures show New Guineans from the villages of Gorendi, Bongu and Gumbu. The locals still remember Maclay and the ties between Russia and Papua New Guinea. What is the link between the Maclay Coast and the Krasin Icebreaker? The guests still had to find that out and get acquainted with the history of the Ship Museum, a true legend of the Russian fleet. I think for me it was to see the, um, the naval ship that uh, took part in the Russian and Jap Japanese war. So I, I studied in Japan for three years and I saw the Japanese version of the naval ship that uh, took part in the war. So it was, it was amazing and it's like overwhelming for me to see both ships. A great surprise for them was the Tabir dish which is stored in the museum. Such items are a real treasure for New Guineans and play a very important role in the exchange. Yes, actually, when we walked in and saw the dish on the table setting, that was... In 2017, Nikolai Miklucha Maklai Jr. brought the dish back after the expedition to Papua New Guinea and presented it to the Icebreaker Museum. If 
from my particular area, we use what they call shell money. There are dishes as well, but the dishes are, for example, the one that was used, I think it's made out of wood from a tree, but the ones that we use in my father's area is made out of baskets, I mean, sorry, made out of cane from the tree. This journey to Russia allowed the guests to compare the cultures of the two countries to find similarities and differences. The Sarskoye Silo Museum Reserve stunned with its refinement. A folk ensemble of the St. Petersburg Conservatory introduced them to Russian folk songs. It's amazing that the Russian words tapur, kukuruza and maklai are still used on the maklai coast. In fact, more than 800 languages are spoken in Papua New Guinea. It was interesting to learn Russian words during the meal. But the food itself was sometimes incomprehensible, as was the language. Sprat. <laughs> They say it right. Oh, yes. It was a new taste. A pig served for a farewell dinner did not raise any questions. Very grateful that you found me as an individual, as a delegate, to represent uh, as someone significant, as a very important guest at that time. So it was kind of overwhelming, like they're serving us pig. Uh, I thought of my people because that's part of our culture. That's part of the identity. When you talk about welcoming somebody, when you talk about the traditional event, they, they do such, okay? But in our very, <clears throat> our very own house, they will slaughter the pig and they will slice it and they will give to the people. So. The introduction to St. Petersburg was coming to an end. At the railway station, there was a surprise, an exhibition, from Mikluha to Maklai. It was opened in honor of the 200th anniversary of the birth of the traveler's father, Nikolai Mikluha. He was the first chief of the railway station and Nikolaevsky train station, now the Moskovsky train station. The guests set off for Moscow to the accompaniment of Russian songs. My expression is that this is my first time on a train and uh, it's more different, it's more like in a plane, you know. It's very comfortable, I see. Each of them imagined Russia in their own way. Now they see it with their own eyes. So what I actually did on Red Square, I had to remove my gloves and touch <laughs> the ground or the pavement. And again, they see Mikluha Maklai's images at the Russian Geographical Society and out in the street. Walking around and when I was shown the um, graffiti or the artwork that was on the side of the building, uh, that was something that was amazing that, that even street art could be portrayed of someone with so much um, history in terms of, you know, the findings that he has done and the contributions that... I'm glad that you've come. Forty years ago, I made a film about Mikluha Maklai. Yuri Solomon, People's Artist of the USSR. For many television viewers, especially in Russia, and especially of the older generation, he remains Mikluha Maklai, the hero from the film The Shore of His Life. Yuri Solomin speaks enthusiastically about the theatre. It is, in a sense, his home. He asks about the trip to St. Petersburg. 
This is to stop you getting cold. <laughs> Now they're not afraid of the cold, although the New Guineans are already getting used to this weather. Laurel, even when in St. Petersburg, started wanting to see the snow. I never ever touched snow before. I've never been in snow, so actually I do hope it snows so I can take some photos. <laughs> and now she enjoys playing snowballs. And then she eats a delicious Russian ice cream on Red Square. Though the delegation members had a tight schedule, they wanted to go everywhere and see as much as possible. They took photos as mementos of the unique exhibits in the Museum of Anthropology of Moscow State University. In the NN Mikluha Maklai Museum of the Institute of Ethnology and Anthropology, they saw exhibits from their homeland. They were given a gift. We made the restoration of Mikluha Maklai in our laboratory. And our institute decided to present for the Museum of your University this uh, sculptural portrait. What else do we have to visit, the guests thought. The answer was the Moscow House of the Book. Here in the Arbat district, the guests visited the exhibition Mikluha Maklai, the 21st century, revived history, at the Moscow House of the Book. It tells of the journeys to New Guinea Island of Mikluha Maklai Sr. in the 19th century and Mikluha Maklai Jr. in the 21st century. So when I saw the exhibition in Moscow uh, bookshop, I felt am amazing. Uh, the feeling that uh, even though despite our country diplomatically and politically not having a strong uh, relation or ties with Russia, but by through the foundation and through the work of uh, Nikolai Maklai, the great Russian scholar in Papua New Guinea, is able to build a bridge. And I think through that bridge, our countries can be connected. These 10 days pass quickly. Their cameras and phones are full of pictures and video materials. They'll have a lot to tell back at home. About a new country, about people, and about Mikluha Maklai Sr., who is also called the White Papuan in Russia. His work is something to be cherished and he, dis he really deserved the title White Papua. I think he's changed how his work has changed how people perceived Papua New Guineans and possibly people of our race as well. That we are probably not an inferior race, we're just different. Together we broke down the myths. 150 years ago, Mikluka Maklai destroyed the myth that Papuans were not people. We destroyed their myths about Russia and our myths about Papuans. One thing that I would remember about his work, an exp uh, expedition to New Guinea, uh, is his work on uh, human, you know, uh, considering the New Guinean race uh, as humans. And that is the phrase that continues to ring at our ears. Благодаря тому, что помнит Маклай, благодаря тому, что помнит... Маклай and the New Guinea Island are still remembered, and that's why all the doors were opened for us. All the museums supported us to make this journey happen. This wasn't just a visit by a delegation. This is a bridge between us. We can say that we have become real friends. So that is very important and significant in our country in the time of APEC. So to conclude, I would say I like to believe that we represent our people and PNG well in this short stay. I really hope that the visit will be like this. 
We reached out to each other, like Maclay once did to Tui. Nothing has changed since then. This is very valuable for us and for the relations between people. Russia and Papua New Guinea have a great future together. Russia for me now is a whole new world.